Hey, what's up guys? This is Gary. Just uh, wanted to make a, a video here. Um, you know, for my normal viewers that, that watch my channel all the time, you may not be interested in this because I'm just going to kind of go through the process of what it takes to get one of these and get it set up. Uh, really for anybody in the future that happens to search for the Grizzly G0542 heavy duty sheet metal brake and um, you know just kind of a product review so you know I mean all of us when we're looking to buy a new product we kind of do a YouTube search to see if anybody's got a product review or one that they're using just to kind of get a more uh, close-up look at it than what the product literature can show you uh, so this is what this is going to be about so if you order one of these you can expect to it to be delivered via freight and um, you know we had uh, pretty good luck with that getting it unloaded off the truck and you know, and get it uh, moved into the garage, no, no big issues with that. Um, and then it's on a, a very well packed uh, pallet with plywood, you know, sides around it. Uh, so we unboxed it and, and, you know, didn't have any issues with that. We got ready to, you know, lift it up to put it on the stands uh, that it comes with and quickly realized we were underprepared. And so if you're gonna get one of these, you need to make sure you've got uh, the right ability to get this thing raised up either um, you know with a forklift or uh, you, you could possibly do it with a wrecker truck if you had enough enough ceiling height they're out in your driveway um, what we chose to do was build a, a gantry crane which we're going to need in the future anyway and so we chose to do that to, to lift it up so um, so we got ready to lift it with a gantry crane we used you know some lifting straps and and two hoists and lifted it from two points but because it had kind of tilted over on its front uh, it was it was not balanced correctly and and not in a position to put the bases on it very well so we used a third hoist here that we've added in to uh, pull up the front of it because this this front plate is one inch thick and it's very very heavy the the uh, the bending wing itself uh, that, that the plates attached to uh, so but anyway we got it lifted up using our gantry crane uh, and our hoist and and all that and so then we just kind of it's mostly assembled. There are a few things that you need to do, and I'm just gonna, you know, go through these uh, pretty quickly here to uh, show you what all is involved. But the uh, the first thing you want to do is it, it comes packed in this cosmoline or this waxy, sticky uh, stuff. It looks kind of like oil, but it's really not, and it's not really meant to be on there for the long term. So you need to use some solvent and and get that you know wiped down, cleaned off, um, and you know, and uh, and then oil it down with with some kind of good <clears throat> uh, penetrant or lubricant, you know, to give it some protection. And then you want to take all of the fingers off and turn those upside down and uh, inside and out. Take them apart and get and get those uh, cleaned um, as well. And then um, and then you want to uh, assemble it, put it back together, um, and you want to. Um, go ahead and align the fingers and there's a specific procedure for doing that where you leave all the, uh, the cap head uh, socket screws loose after you get them back on here and then you use the bending wing uh, and, and the weight of it to, to come up level as you can see here and then you go and tighten those down with the fingers pressed up against it and that way you have a nice square uh, mating surface between the bending uh, between the fingers and the wing okay um, so then after, uh, after you get that set up, it comes with uh, the handles and so you can, you know, you can go ahead and put the handle, uh, the main handle on it and then uh, it's got these larger levers here, you know, if you need some extra leverage and we put those on. Um, and then <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the, the last thing we did was we went ahead and uh, put our counterweights on. And the one thing I found to be handy with that, because they weigh, I don't know how much they weigh, but I'm guessing probably 60 pounds ish each, something in that range. So they're a little bit awkward to kind of, you know, hoist up. So I put the bottom bolt in first, um, and then as you see, rotated up the uh, the other, and and it you know provided some stability to be able to get the top bolt in, and then uh, secured it all all down. So um, you, you got a couple of you know adjustments on it. You got the um, you know the the eccentric here. For, and, and by the way, on, on the eccentric, these arms come shipped uh, in a packing position, and you got to take those off and reposition them, uh, as you see there, which which we did, and get those in the right uh, position. So that's just a simple unbolt and bolt those back on uh, after you've moved them. And then
and they're on an eccentric to be able to rotate this uh, bending or the or the fingers down onto the clamp bar. Um, and then in the back here, as you see, there's a, a setback adjustment, and that that adjusts how far back the uh, the fingers are from the edge of the clamp bar. So if you want a really crisp radius and you got fairly thin material, you want that as far forward as you can get it. And if you if you want more of a of a, a loose radius or a rounded radius uh, and not a tight bend. Um, you can push that, you know, uh, move the, the setback back by making the adjustments on the back, and that'll give you a more rounded, uh, you know, look to it. Okay. So, uh, as you see, we're, you know, bending a little bit of sheet metal here, and you can see the really, really crisp, uh, you know, output on that. Just really, really crisp. And, uh, you know, this is 16 gauge material. Really pleased with that. Um, also, bent some some four, um, I'm sorry, some eighth inch uh, material, which is 11 gauge. Okay, this thing is rated for 14 gauge for the entire length, to bend something the entire length of it, which is 48 inches. And it's rated for 12 gauge for half the length, okay? Um, so this is a piece of eighth inch, which is 11 gauge, um, but it's only an inch and a half wide, so we thought we'd give it a try. And as you see here, it did a really nice job, really crisp bend. You know, I've got the uh, Swag Off-Road uh, finger brake that goes in the press and it doesn't do and it's, it's rated to bend up to quarter inch and it doesn't do near as nice a job of, of the crispness on a bend that that, uh, that this thing has done, has done so overall you know I, I it was packed well uh, shipped you know no real issues as far as grizzly uh, everything bolted together is set up like it like it needed to be the initial bends that we made are um, you know really great um, really pleased with that. So I, I would, you know, for, for what I need this for, I wouldn't hesitate uh, to recommend it. The only, you know, the only downside I saw in the reviews and so forth is, you know, the main pivot point here um, is the, you know, the pin that's inserted in this pivot point is not bushed. Okay, so you're riding right against the cast, uh, the castings here that these are made out of. And you know, and they, they, they are, you can oil them. They've got a, a fitting on them to be, a Zerk fitting to be old, but they're, um, but they're, not, they're not bushed or, or anything. So, uh, but for the very low volume I'm, I'm gonna use this for, you know, I'll, I'll never have an issue with that. But if you're gonna use this in a production shop like HVAC or something where you're gonna be having somebody stand at this machine and, you know, and, and do things on it all day long, they, they could have a problem with it. I did make casters for it. I've got a separate video I'm gonna upload showing the details of how I made those. Um, and some people commented that it may not be stable enough for casters, and you can see we added some feet to level and stabilize it. But the thing, the bends I've made on it so far, it's never even uh, you know hinted at falling over or being unstable or anything like that. It's very, very stable now that it's up on the casters and it's been easy to move around and, and all that. So. Anyway, I hope this video, uh, you found it helpful and you can use this for, uh, to help you make your decision on whether you want to buy this. I'm not affiliated with Grizzly. I have no relationship to them. Uh, just, you know, showing this video for anybody in the future that may uh, have an interest. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thank uh -huh.